is Push to Exit, and in this video we will be showing you exactly how our robot was put together. It's an introduction to the world of roboteering, and proof that S-Tech don't just buy robots, we build them too. Welcome to Push to Exit, Under the Armour. Hello YouTube viewers and random Robot Wars fans, here from the Robot Wars pits, we have a very special look at Push to Exit, the brand new machine from Team Aztec, where we will be covering all the elements of its design and build, so let's get into it. Now, the idea for the design came from the Envy series of robots created by Aztec in the past. This is pretty much the same robot on the inside, just more modern and much sleeker looking. It was constructed in a steel fabrication factory, where we made use of all the factory equipment to build the machine. The chassis base is 8mm aluminium, while the inner bulkheads are made of 3mm mild steel, and here we have a spare one to show you. These make up the main part of the chassis. They're lasered out to make them as light as possible, and are shaped to hold the CO2 bottle at the rear, while at the front there's a hole where the flipper is hinged to. Nuts insert along the bottom to attach them to the base, and the top for attaching to the outer armour which is constructed from 3mm hard ox, while the blue paint is oven baked powder coat. The slits were added purely for looks. LED lights were going to be added behind them, but time and weight issues restricted this. On the top panel there's a small hatch allowing easy access to the removable link, but more on this later. But that's enough about the outer shell, let's open it up and take a look at the inner workings of the robot. The black scoop at the front is made from 7mm thick titanium, protecting it from any damage. The front hinge of the flipping arm is held by two large pins attached at the base, while the arm itself is attached to the ram with a large pin, making it easy to remove for servicing the weapon. The ram is a Bosch 100mm diameter 250mm stroke low pressure ram, which is the same as those used in earlier Envy robots. Normally you would hinge a ram in the centre, but on here you can see the hinges toward the bottom. This was built incredibly strong, for fear of breaking under the large forces which the weapon produces. The tabs across the back are used for securing the main top lid. Where you can see the push to exit logo sticker, we were going to add some steel fins that kind of looked like a rear splitter on a sports car for added defence against spinners and also to make it look aesthetically pleasing, but the 110 kilogram weight limit stopped the addition. The CO2 bottle which powers the weapon would be sitting in there, but it's normally removed when not in battle. The bottle is tied down. However, it doesn't have much room to move when the lid is on, thanks to the compact design of the machine. Push to Exit uses OptiPower LiPo batteries. The robot uses four of these overall, with a total power of 28.8 volts. These are Anderson connectors. We use these for the main wiring loom, from the batteries to the speed controller, and also from the speedo to the motors. The Robotech speed controller can work up to 50 volts, and is a proven speed controller, used by all of the robots S-Tech have built over the last decade. These are the main valves for the weapon, one to fire and one to retract, and are the same valves that are used on one of the house robots. They're powered on 24 volts and have a massive flow rate to make the weapon fire incredibly quickly and work on a low pressure 10 bar. You can see a wheel in there too, both are custom made from aluminium and coated in a tyre called Vulcalon which provides immense traction. In fact, these are the same as those used on the very powerful Storm 2. You can also sort of see a gearbox, but fortunately we have a spur one to take a closer look at. This was custom built to hold the motor and make a gearbox to a ratio of 5 to 1. It's made from 5mm steel and just like the bulkheads it's laser cut to lose weight. The motors used are A4300 amp flow 24 volts which spin at 4000 rpm. We get 4 horsepower from these on 24 volts. Here you can make out an exhaust port that expels the used CO2 from the weapon. The piping is high quality and flexible which is thick to allow for a better flow. This is the Victor regulator which drops the pressure from the bottle from 70 bar all the way down to 10 bar. There are fittings on there, one going off to the valves and the other to the dump valve which is used to empty the system of CO2 after a battle. 
This is the main removable power link. All the power from the batteries go through this link and once removed like it is now the robot is completely dead and safe to handle. This is always taken out unless we're testing the machine or when it's in battle where it's game over if it's knocked or shaken out. But the velcro strap gives it a much more secure fit. The handset is a Spectrum DX7. It's a reliable handset and S-Tech have used Spectrum ever since 2.4 GHz was introduced to radio controllers. It's a single stick drive on the right hand side, while the left is for the weapon, meaning that one driver can control both the driving and weapons at the same time. There is however the option to have a buddy box if we need a separate weapons operator. With all that said and done, it was time to put the robot back together, so we could take it from our bench in the pits all the way over to the testing arena, where I could get my hands on the controls for the first time. Push to exit is extremely responsive and I was amazed at just how fast the robot moves. The test arena may be very small, but even over such a short distance it takes a lot of control to not bash into the side walls. The machine features tank steering, so moving one wheel forward and the other back allows push to exit to turn and even go into a full 360 degree spin. There's a high amount of power behind the drive and the cameras on the show just can't capture the high speed and the danger that you feel the robot emanating as you control it. And so that brings us to the end of this video. We at Team S Tech really hope you enjoyed it and gave you a better understanding of the robot and roboteering in general. If you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos and keep up to date with all my upcoming reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.